Hello, that's better. Hello, good afternoon, Felsdom. I hope you're having a, a great conference. Um, if you just uh, joined us in this room, welcome to the PHP and Friends uh, Dev Room. Um, I'm going to talk about a dashboard I created using uh, Laravel uh, View and Pusher. So if that's the talk you want to see, keep in your seats. Um, I am Freek van der Herte. I am a partner and a developer at a company called Spasi. Uh, like many of you probably, I am uh, active on Twitter. My handle is Freek Meuse. Um, and I have my blog, Meuse.be, where I talk about modern PHP development and Laravel. Um, I also organize the local PHP uh, Antwerp uh, group, uh, user group, uh, together with uh, Dries and Frederick. Uh, if you ever want to talk at PHP Antwerp, let me know. Now, my company Spasi has been around uh, since 2003. We built uh, websites, applications, and webshops. Our team is quite small. Uh, we consist of uh, four developers and one manager and we specialize in Laravel development. Now we are looking uh, for a new colleague, so if you know somebody uh, that is a very good front-end uh, front developer, or if you are a very good front-end developer yourself, let me know. First, before I want to talk uh, uh, a bit about open source software. Um, now my company uses a lot of so open source software from day to day. We use uh, Nginx, we use Ubuntu, we use Laravel. And for this we are very grateful. We, um, uh, we owe, our company couldn't really exist without open source software and I'm pretty certain that many of you um, have your jobs due to the fact that the open source software exists. Now, because we are so grateful for this, we want to give some back too. And uh, we are pretty heavily uh, creating uh, open source PHP packages. Right now we have 90 uh, packages registered on packages. Uh, they have been downloaded for now almost than 2 million times. And they are being downloaded at a rate of uh, 270,000 times a month. Now, creating open source software has a lot of benefits. We learn a lot by doing it, and we learn a lot by the feedback we get from the community, um, uh, from, from the issues they raise and for the, from the PRs they open. We are also uh, forced to write uh, documentation, because without good documentation, people wouldn't really use our software. We are forced to write tests because if uh, we uh, change our software or we get PRs, we want to be certain that our software still works. Um, and I, there is also a bit of a commercial aspect to it as well. If you look at our, uh, at our code, then I think you'll conclude that we know our way around uh, PHP and Laravel very well. And of course, we use our own stuff uh, in our own projects as well. There's a big list on our company site uh, about, uh, with all the packages that we have uh, that we have published, and I want to humble brag uh, a little bit. There is this website called GitHub Awards that makes uh, a top of the amount of stars that the GitHub organization can receive, and right now Spasi is, is at number six for PHP worldwide. At uh, number one is Laravel, uh, with an insane amount of stars. Now, um, about the dashboard. Let's take a look at our office. This is our actual office. And you see that in the back there is a dashboard. Let's step in a little closer. So this is the dashboard that is hanging in our office. The first thing that I want to say is that uh, this dashboard is completely open sourced. Uh, you can find the code at this GitHub repository. And this is actu the actual code that we deploy to, to our server. Um, let's take a look what the, the dashboard uh, displays. Um, I'm going to pull up a chair, that's easier for me, because I'm going to code a little bit too. Um, so the first style of the dashboard, that is, um, uh, that is a Twitter stream, and it displays all the tweets uh, that mention uh, one of our repos or our company uh, Twitter account. Uh, the second tile, uh, there uh, is displayed all the events that are important for our company. Uh, that info is fetched from uh, a Google Calendar. 
Uh, these next four tiles, they contain the tasks that each member of our team should be, uh, should be working on. Um, this one really needs no introduction, that is just the clock. Um, I mentioned that we are really proud of our open source work, so we display some statistics about uh, the uh, amount of packages that get downloaded on our dashboard. So this info is fetched from, uh, from packages. Um, now at my company we're all big music lovers, so we want to know which, which music is playing and this style displays the current track that is uh, playing uh, in our office. Um, for um, this tile, last of him is uh, is used. Uh, does everybody know last of him? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this next tile that displays uh, the status of our internet connection. If internet is down, this tile will go red. Um, this tile um, is a 30-minute rain forecast. Uh, so at Spassi, we um, all arrive by bike. And uh, yeah, we want to know if it is going to rain when we when we depart from uh, from our office. So that in total is our dashboard. Let's first start with a high-level overview of how this dashboard works. Um, the dashboard itself is a single HTML page, and it is uh, displayed in a full-screen browser. And once it has been loaded up we won't reload it again because we don't want to see our screen rebuilt the whole time. So that's why each tile will be updated with JavaScript. And each tile has its, has its own update frequency. So the packages tile with the statistics of our uh, packages, that gets updated I think once an hour, and the clock obviously gets updated once a second. Now which technologies did we use for this? Um, Laravel, Pusher, and Vue.js. Now, uh, a quick show of hands. Who uses Laravel here in this day-to-day -day work? Okay, quite some hands. Who, use, who, who has used the Pusher service before? A little less. And who used Vue in one of the projects? Okay, also a bit of hands. Cool. Um, I'll go gentle on, on everybody, so you don't, don't need to know any of those technologies. Um, first, Laravel. Um, in case you don't know, Laravel is a very nice um, PHP uh, framework. And for this uh, project, we use the, the latest version of Laravel, 5.4. Um, is, Laravel is used to, to render that initial page. And Laravel will also <laughs> fetch data from external APIs. So La uh, Laravel will reach out to the Google Calendar API, to the last event API, to, to get some information. And it will broadcast um, a signal whenever new data uh, has been fetched from an API. How does it do that? It will just um, make an HTTP connection to the, to the pusher service. We'll see that a bit later on. To talk to those external APIs, we use a few packages. Uh, the first one, uh, SPASI, Laravel Twitter Streaming API, is used to listen to, to Twitter, um, to the, to the real-time stream, and to filter out all um, tweets mentioning our company account. The second uh, package, something we build ourselves too, Laravel Google Calendar, is used to uh, read a Google Calendar. And um, it, it isn't, that functionality isn't used in our dashboard, but that package can also write to a Google Calendar. So if you uh, have a project where you need to integrate the Google Calendar, take a look at that package. Uh, lots of them now playing that's being used to uh, uh, see what, which track is currently playing in our office. The package API is a simple uh, wrapper around the package uh, uh, around the API that packages exposes. And remember those tiles with, uh, with tasks for each member of our team? Um, those tasks are administered in, uh, in a GitHub repository, in a, in a few markdown files, and we use the Graham Campbell uh, GitHub uh, package to uh, fetch the content of those markdown files. The second technology that we use for our dashboard is the pusher service. Now, in their own words, Pusher provides full duplex communication channels over a simple TCP connection. You might know this as WebSockets. 
but I like to call this magic because it really is magic. It's so fast, it's, uh, it transports the events from the server to the browser. So when Laravel detects uh, a, a change in the, in, the, in the data or when it fetches new data <coughs> from one of the APIs, it will uh, notify the pusher service via an HTTP connection and the pusher service will via WebSockets notify our, our, the, the JavaScript of, of our dashboard. We're going to see the entire flow in just a minute. Now, Pusher will communicate via WebSockets in, in real time. It's really fast. It does this also in a secure way. It, not that our dashboard uh, displays a lot of sensitive info, but we don't really want the outside world to know which tasks that our team is working on. I should also mention that Pusher is a, is a paid service, um, but they also provide a free tier. And in that free tier, you can use, I think, 200,000 events a day, and the dashboard only needs 5,000. So you're probably good in the, in the free tier if you want to run our dashboard. So the last big piece of technology the dashboard uses is Vue.js. Vue.js <coughs> excuse me, is, uh, is a JavaScript framework that has gotten a lot of love from the Laravel community uh, uh, lately. And I can certainly understand why. Uh, just like Laravel um, focuses on developer happiness and ease of use, uh, Vue.js does so too. It's, it's, it's a very powerful framework, but it's very easy to, to get started uh, with it. It's easy to learn. Now in each, in, in, um, in our dashboard, each tile is its own component. And each <coughs> component will listen for its, its own events. So that packages style will listen for, um, for its own events. And when it um, receives one of its events, when it, when it hears that event, it will update itself with the information from that event. And I should, al should also mention that we use in this project the latest version of Vue, which is currently Vue 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this is um, a schema that uh, explains the whole flow. So on the one side, we have uh, the external services. Laravel will, um, will fetch info from, from that. When it uh, finds new info, it will notify Pusher via an HTTP connection. And uh, Pusher will notify the browser via WebSockets that something needs to be, uh, be updated. So this is the general flow that you will have to keep in mind. Now, I can talk a lot about this dashboard, but it's probably more fun if I just demo it uh, to you. Um, what are we going to, uh, to talk about? I'm first going to explain how the grid system works. Uh, works. Um, so how tiles are positioned on, on the dashboard. I'm going to explain the clock tile because that's a very simple tile. It only uses JavaScript. Then we're going to explain a little bit more difficult tile, the packages tile. Then we're going to see the entire flow. And then just for fun, we're going to uh, uh, play a bit around with the Twitter tile as well. Now, uh, there will be some live coding and um, we're going to use uh, uh, an internet connection. So I hope the internet gods are happy today and uh, pro hopefully all will go well. Okay, let's do it. Uh, let's first take a look at the dashboard itself. And I hope it's big enough. This is uh, a version of the dashboard that is very like to the one we have um, running in, uh, in our office. And this one is just running locally on, uh, on my computer. Let's uh, take a look at the code that powers this dashboard. We're going to make this a lot bigger um, by entering presentation mode. And if you look at the structure of, uh, of the application here, uh, then the, the ones with a little bit of uh, Laravel experience will immediately recognize this as a Laravel application. Um, in a Laravel application, the, the view side of things lives in the resources folder, in the subfolder views. And we see that we have a single uh, blade view here. Blade that is just a view system of, uh, of Laravel. And if we open that, let me close this out, 
then you see we have only a very little bit of, uh, of HTML here. And you can see here that each HTML tag here represents uh, a tile from, uh, from our dashboard. I'm later going to explain uh, how these tags get converted to real HTML tags. But for now, just let's just put everything here in, uh, in comments except the current time tile. So this uh, piece can go here, this piece can go there. Let's modify the grid here and put it in A1 and see what the result is. And you can see that we only have a clock left in the upper left corner. Now you see, should see the dashboard a little bit as an, uh, as an Excel file where all the rows are numbered and all the columns have their letters. So A1 is just in the top. If I want to go to the second uh, row, I can just uh, move it to A2 and then it's a row below this. Uh, the grid system also um, has support for ranges. So if I want to make it a little bit wider, then I go from A2 to B2. And that's a feature that I can show off also is that uh, tiles can be used multiple times. So now we have two clocks here. So that's how that works. Now for a clock, it's a little bit silly to have two clocks on this, but uh, you see here that we have uh, multiple uh, GitHub file tiles for each member of our team. So uh, that's where we use uh, multiple uh, multiple tiles. So. That is the grid system. It's quite easy, but are there any questions about it? Everybody on the same page? Yes? Is it based on the So the question is, is it uh, based uh, uh, on bootstrap? Um, actually, I didn't make the, the CSS part of this dashboard myself, um, but I understand that we uh, hand-rolled uh, our own lightweight system to, uh, to accommodate this. Uh, on my blog, a colleague of mine uh, explained the inner workings of that grid system. I'll uh, show you the link later on in the presentation. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, put the dashboard back in its in its original state. See that we don't lose everything. Are we back good? Yep. Here's the dashboard again. Okay. Uh, let's explain that current time tile. How does that work? Well, current time isn't really a, a valid uh, HTML element by itself, um, but it signals um, to view which component should be rendered here. If I open up the, the project again, um, all JavaScript in a Laravel application lives in the resources folder, assets, JavaScript, and if I open up components here and make it a little bit wider, then you can see here that we have a view component for each tile in our dashboard. Um, now a view file, let me open up the current time view file here. A view file is a, uh, a bit of a special type of file because it can, it can contain many uh, sorts of information. It, it contains a little bit of HTML, it contains a little bit of CSS, and it contains a little bit of JavaScript code. And uh, that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is all uh, being used to build up a specific component. Now, in our project, because the CSS is, um, is a little bit advanced, we chose uh, to uh, do all the CSS in one file separately. So, in this file, you see only a bit of HTML, and you see uh, some, some JavaScript here. Now, this HTML here, the template, that is uh, what Vue is going to use to replace uh, the current time. Uh, tag here. So current time gets replaced uh, by the HTML in this template. You can also see that in this template we have uh, a few placeholders, namely date and time, and those correspond to the, uh, the state of the view object. So if I scroll a little bit down, then we have here, uh, then we have a little bit of JavaScript here. And 
at the heart of every uh, view component lives uh, the state. So these are the two uh, special properties that we are going to work around it. And um, if that's, that's something special that view, view does, we have uh, two-way model binding. If we change one of these variables, it will re-render the HTML. So another special function in a view component is the created function. This function can be a little bit compared to, the, uh, to a constructor in a PHP class. It will run whenever the view component is instantiated. So what are we going to do in the created method? We are going to call a function refresh time, and we are going to call that uh, function every single second. And what happens in that method, refresh time, it will just update uh, the date using a well-known JavaScript library in moments, and it will update the time. And this happens every second. And because we update those variables, <coughs> the HTML will be re-rendered. That's how this works. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about, about this, how this works? OK, then, uh, then we'll move on to uh, another component, the packages uh, tile. So the packages tile, that's this one. That's the one that displays all the package information here. Um, let's open up our tree here again. And if I go into the Laravel application itself, you can see that we have here a folder uh, components. And we have a subdirectory here for every tile that our dashboard is displaying that needs some server side info. Let's open up the packages tile. So, uh, the, the fetch totals clause, I mean. So if I go to the top of this class, then you can see um, that this uh, class extends uh, a command. I'm going to come back to this uh, later why this is significant. If I go a little bit uh, below here, then we have a handle function. And here, uh, this function is where the actual work will happen. So we are going to instantiate the packages uh, API, and we are going to for, uh, perform some um, some collection methods um, to uh, to build up an array with the totals. So how it, it does that is not that important for this talk, but the result of this function is an uh, is an array with the uh, total amount of stars, uh, the daily downloads, the monthly downloads, and the total amount of downloads. And uh, what will happen is uh, with that array is that it will be passed into an, uh, a class, a totals fetched event class. And if I open up that class, what happens here is actually very simple. So every um, uh, row in that array will get mapped to a public property on, on the class. Why do we do that? Well. Um, Laravel, by default, when uh, an event is broadcasted, it will use the public properties of that class as the properties that should be sent through, through that event. We're going to see it live in a, in a minute. Um, good, so that's how that works. If I go back to fetch totals, I uh, mentioned that fetch totals extended a, a command class and it, that it has a signature. <laughs> Now, for the people that uh, know uh, Laravel a bit, they immediately recognize this as an artisan command. Artisan is uh, Laravel's uh, task runner. And one of the cool features of Laravel is that it has a built-in scheduler as well. Um, if I go to our console and to our kernel, we can see the scheduler of Laravel, and it's, it's actually qu quite easy. So Laravel has a, has a console kernel with a schedule function, and in that function you can schedule things. Um, and here the, the code is a little bit messed up because the, the screen is not so, uh, so wide. But here we can see that we uh, are going to perform that fetch totals command hourly. So this command is going to be, be run hourly. 
Um, okay. What I'm going to explain next. Um, let's just fire off the command and see uh, and see what happens. Um, if I go to my browser again, and let me clear this out. I can make this any bigger, so I hope that it's big, big enough for you, or I can make it a little bigger. Cool. This is the debug console at the, at the pusher at pusher JS, and it will uh, display every um, um, yeah, every event that is that is coming in. Now, if I go to uh, the command line and if I run artisan here, just then it will display all the tasks that are regi registered. And if I scroll a little bit up, then you can see here that we have uh, dashboard, um, dashboard commands. And one of the commands is here, dashboard packages. So let's run that, uh, dashboard uh, packages. And then hopefully, if the internet gods are willing, we are going to see here the event coming in. You can see here that we have the information that we have uh, uh, received from uh, from the Laravel application. Okay, let's take a look at the JavaScript side of things, how this event is being catched. Uh, back to the code. Um, let's open up the resource folder again, assets, JavaScript, uh, components. And we can see here there's a package statistics component. So it also uh, contains some HTML and it also contains a little bit of JavaScript. And you can see here that in the HTML uh, we have a few uh, of those uh, state properties of the view instance, the stars, uh, daily, monthly uh, downloads and the, the total can see here that the default is zero. This is the, the default state of the component. Now, you can see here that this component has a special function, get event handlers. And this is what happens when uh, an event is, uh, is, is arriving at our JavaScript component. So whenever the package is total fetched events is coming in, um, we are going to execute a function that receives the response and we are just going to take off the, the properties of that response and copy them over to the internal state of the project. And uh, remember when we update the, the state of the view component, the HTML will re-render. So as soon as this function is executed, new numbers will, will appear on our dashboard. Um, you can see, I can prove that here. So I've um, just run um, the, uh, the packages command. You can see here that the total now ends on 965 and on our dashboard there should be here 965. So he got that, uh, that data. If I jump a little bit deeper here, let's see here. Then you can see that the component also has a special property mixin. Um, a mixin in view is a little bit as the same as a trait in PHP. So it's just a way to combine some functions and apply them to, to multiple classes. Um, let me open up my tree here again. One of the, the mixins that we use is echo. And echo is a, is a library. Uh, provided by uh, the maker of Laravel to easily work with, um, with real-time WebSocket uh, connections. Now, if I uh, open up that mixin, so here's the, the echo mixin, then you can see that uh, this uh, mixin provides a special function, namely created. Um, and created, that's a function that will execute whenever the view component uh, is, uh, is being instantiated. And it will um, register um, the result of that get event handlers function from the, from the component to the echo instance. And the echo instance, that's the thing that does the, uh, the communication with, uh, with, with pusher. So it will listen for 
uh, a specific event. And you can see here that we uh, prepend app events and then the event name, which is packages totals fetched. And whenever that event is coming in, we are going to execute uh, the, the handler. So then we are going to execute this function. So that's, that's how that works. And note that this event that we are, we are listening for, app events um, and then packages totals fetched, that is the, the class name of the, of the event that was, uh, that was fired. So if I go op over the events here, the packages events, you can see here app events packages totals fetch. So that's, that's what it's listening for, for that class name. That is how that works. I know it's a little bit much, certainly if you don't know your way around Laravel or Vue, but are there any questions about this? Okay, good. Clear or totally unclear, that's also a possibility. Um, let's take a look at another aspect of the dashboard. Um, so I mentioned that the flow of the dashboard, so that um, our dashboard really isn't communicating with, with the server, it just listens for events to update its state. So you might think that if I refresh the dashboard, that it would be empty, but it is not. All the, all the info is being displayed here. How does that work? We have uh, on our component, let me go back to the component. Um, we have a, another little mix in here called save state. And I hope I can get easily to that save state component. I uh, mix in, yeah, and that's this is the, the code of that safe state mix in. So this code gets um, uh, applied on the on the on the view component as well, and it has a, a special um, property called watch. And here you can define a few functions that should execute whenever the internal state of the of the view component changes. And one of the the things that it will do whenever data changes is call function save state. This is that function save state. Let me close it up. That's, that's a little bit more clear. <coughs> and what this thing will do, it will just copy over the data of the component to local storage whenever data changes. And whenever this component is created, it will call function load state and that just does the opposite things in a safe way. That's why it's there. that's why there's many code here. So it will uh, copy over um, values from local storage to the internal state. So if I open up this here, and I really don't know how to make the inspector a little bit bigger, but if I go to the local storage used by um, uh, by this dashboard, you can see here in very small that each tile has its own entry in the local storage. So now if I um, just delete this one from the packages statistics, then you can see that the packages statistics uh, are back to zero. Maybe this is also a good opportunity to demonstrate that uh, the dashboard is also responsive. So you can display it in, on any uh, TV that you want. So that's how those two, two mix-ins work. Um, let's go over one more tile, the, the packages tile. Um, first in code, packages, uh, no, no, the Twitter tile. The Twitter tile is actually a very simple tile. Our uh, package makes it really simple to, uh, to work with the Twitter streaming API. So <coughs> you can just resolve a Twitter streaming API class out of the container, you can listen to the public stream. And whenever a certain word is, is mentioned, then uh, an event will, uh, will fire off and our uh, Twitter tile will uh, listen for that event. Now, I thought it may be fun to uh, not listen for SPAS here, but to just listen to PHP FOSDEM for a while to see what is happening there. So if I start up here now the, the, the task that is actually listening to Twitter, dashboard Twitter. 
So now, it, now it's listening for PHP Fosdem. And now um, I need some people that uh, send a tweet to PHP Fosdem and spasi.be. So if you're on Twitter, if there's anybody here, and here we have a random tweet here, you can see that's working and it works really fast. So it's, uh, it works in, uh, in real time. <laughs> Sorry, Wim. <laughs> so that's uh, that's how that 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 works. And if I uh, take a look uh, at the code here of the tile itself, um, uh, resources, assets, JavaScript components, Twitter tile. Then you can see here that we are going to um, listen for an event, Twitter mentioned. And whenever a Twitter is uh, coming on, uh, tweet is coming on, we are going to add it to a waiting line. A waiting line is something that we build. If, if a lot of tweets are, are uh, coming in, uh, then we put them in the waiting line and, they, and we just pick uh, the latest tweet from the waiting line every five seconds to go on display so that they're uh, displaying nicely. So if I go... Uh, here in the inspector again, and uh, inspect the view here. It's a, a special plugin for Chrome to uh, display the state of, uh, of view components. You can see here that we have a Twitter tile, and if I uh, open it up here, then you can see here that there's now one object in the waiting line, uh, and we just missed it, now it's, uh, now it's on display. And now it's, there's one back again here, which is displayed there. So that's how the Twitter, uh, the Twitter tile works. Cool picture here. Some some red taken here. Cool. Um, okay. Maybe um, one more technical thing that I can can demonstrate. So the whole um, presentation, I used the pusher service to get uh, to get events. Um, but there is also another way. So I I chose pusher when building this dashboard because. Uh, at that time, a year ago, that was the easiest way for me to uh, use secure uh, web socket uh, connections, uh, do that. Um, but now, with Laravel Echo, Laravel Echo is a driver-based um, library, you can just switch out another to another driver and another service. And now it just happens that somebody built a, a node server that just mimics Pusher.js, so you don't need the pusher service at all if you run that node server on your server. And that's the thing that I like to demonstrate now. So if I go to the environment <coughs> file of, um, of our project, um, it displays one key here, but below this file there are all my, my private keys and passwords that you guys uh, won't get to see. But if I switch this off from Laravel to Laravel Pusher, uh, uh, what what is it called? Laravel Pusher Server, Pusher Server. I hope. Let me um, start that server. No, j let me to uh, to prove that I'm not using the Pusher service. Just turn uh, off my Wi-Fi. Uh, Laravel Echo Server. Echo server start. Let me boot up the server. So this is a node server that just mimics Pusher.js. Laravel push server. I hope I typed it correctly. And if I refresh now, oh, Laravel Pusher service not defined. Let me check my comfy file here. Broadcasting <coughs> Laravel Echo server. Okay. Sorry about that. Laravel Echo Server. And if I refresh now, we still have a dashboard, but I'm using um, local WebSockets now. I also have a, have a task. Let me make this a little bit bigger again. Uh, dashboard demo, dashboard demo. I've uh, made a task which can uh, send a fake tweet, so it will just uh, send an event with a, with a with a payload that is uh, just saved in the file. And if I send that now, you can see here that the dashboard is updating so that we use our, our local website. 
cool. That's how uh, how that works. So, cool. The live coding worked. The internet connection worked. I'm happy. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now uh, a few other points uh, to cover. Um, and one of the things that I like to show you is how we display it on a TV. And displaying on a TV is uh, is quite simple, actually. We use a Raspberry uh, Pi 2 for that. That's a, a little device that just lives behind our TV. And what the cool thing is about the Raspberry Pi is, besides that it's 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 uh, it's really cheap. It's uh, it's only 30 bucks or so. Is that it uh, can be powered through an USB port. Uh, from our TV itself, so we don't have any extra cords uh, behind uh, behind that. Um, our Raspberry Pi just uses uh, Raspbian Jesse, which is the default operating system of a Raspberry Pi. And when it boots up, it will just uh, uh, um, start up uh, a Chromium browser, which is the the engine that powers Chrome, and it will uh, show the dashboard in full screen mode. Now I have brought uh, a copy of our dashboard here, but we don't have the, the right uh, cable to connect it to the, um, to the display, but I made a little movie at home that, uh, that I can show you how it starts up. And for me this is uh, much less stressful because I know that this movie that in the end it will work out and with this it's always a little bit, I hope it will work. So now uh, I've just put it in, uh, uh, put its, its power in, so now it's, uh, it's, it's powering up. It's now uh, trying to look for an internet uh, connection, it will find that, so that's, I know it will find it. And now it will um, um, start up its, uh, its user interface. And in the middle you'll see a terminal window, and in the terminal window there is a script running that will uh, open up Chrome and uh, display uh, our dashboard. So that's, it's going to do that in, uh, in just a minute, hopefully. Should speed this movie a little bit up, I think. Uh. But in real life it's also a little bit slow, but once it's displaying, it, uh, it works very nice. So and this is the, the dashboard that has been started up. An older version without the Twitter tile. The Twitter tile is only a week old or something. So that's how that works. Um, if you liked everything that you, you see, uh, that, that you saw, uh, you can try uh, the dashboard out uh, for yourself. I've mentioned that we've open sourced it. Its, uh, its code is on uh, a GitHub repository. I've also written an uh, extensive blog post about it on my blog. That's the first link. And a colleague, colleague of mine um, wrote uh, a post about how that grid system uh, works. So if you're interested in that, uh, check that out. Now, I've uh, talked here the whole time, so you might think, hey, this guy can do everything, but the, I've not made this dashboard myself. It was a team effort. So my colleague, Willem, he uh, provided the looks of the uh, dashboard. He made it uh, look very pretty, and he designed the grid system. And my colleague, Sebastian, he, uh, yeah, he cleaned up all my crappy uh, JavaScript code and, and made, that, uh, made that good. <laughs> if you want to learn more about working with the dashboard, I suggest that you just head over to the home pages of the technologies that we use, that you check out uh, the documentation of Laravel Pusher and Vue.js. And if you want to learn more about Vue, I can really recommend um, uh, Viewcast.com, uh, which is a video course on a service called Laracast where a guy called Jeffrey Way provides the best introduction uh, to, uh, to Vue.js uh, possible. Now, if you want to uh, use a dashboard but aren't, interesting, aren't interested in tinkering with our code, there are many alternatives like uh, Gecko Board, Syfy, and uh, Razorflow. Those are hosted services where you can just click your own dashboard together. Or you can opt to use dashing.io. It's built... Uh, it, it was built by Shopify. Uh, it's a, it's a Ruby-based uh, dashboard. It's uh, no longer maintained, but it works uh, really great. We used that dashboard before uh, building our own, and we used many of the principles that we saw in Dashing to build our own dashboard. 
And with that, I've um, said everything I want to say about uh, our project. Do you have any questions about this? Now is the time. Yes. So, uh, why do you use uh, push-on service instead of uh, pulling the data from, uh, from JavaScript? Like, what's, uh, what was the advantages of doing this? Uh, it's for real time, but like, what's the difference if you do a like every one second or two in real time, right? Yeah. So the question is, uh, why uh, do we use WebSockets and the pusher service instead of letting the JavaScript uh, just <coughs> communicate with, uh, with the server? Um, I think the, the first reason that comes to mind is um, we want to play around with WebSockets. <laughs> the, we want to get our, our feet a little bit wet with uh, using the technology. Um, and also because of the real time part, because we don't want to pull a server. Now, Spassi is a very small company. We have only have one office. Um, but imagine that we have a thousand uh, dashboards. Then with web, web sockets for a server, that, that, that isn't really a problem because those dashboards will never go to the server. So it's very scalable in, in this way as well. And that's why, uh, why we chose Web sockets. Okay? Yes? Uh, so, which server, which service that we are using for the ring um, uh, forecast? Uh, that is a uh, radar. That's a, that's a well known thing. They have, a, they have a, a very crappy API, I should mention, but, but it works well. But the format in which they send data is really horrible, but it works. So, it's radar. Yes? Yeah, in, in Ravel, usually when you create your own custom classes, you need to extend some functionality, and then you want to, to use those classes somewhere else inside your application. Yeah. Usually, Ravel doesn't allow you to call static uh, classes or static methods inside it, and it will generate an error. But I see you have created a component, and inside the component, you have a lot of um, um, files there and they do some, some tasks, so how did you achieve like, to use them without any problem? <coughs> so the question is, um, how did we uh, get to use here our namespace uh, no, thing? No, every, everyone inside the application, because here is where you define your classes, but you call them somewhere else inside the application, right? Uh, yeah, I call this, <coughs> this gets called by uh, the uh, by the scheduler, this this one. You know what? After the talk, I'll I'll uh, go with you a bit through the code, and then we can just solve your question with the code uh, at hand. Okay? Yes. I was wondering. You just said that it's possible to uh, show the dashboards on multiple screens if you're company. Yeah. Is it possible to use for each dashboard a different source for files? For example, not having to stay with the same size people throughout the company? Yeah. Um, it's not possible with the code as is, but it can be easily modified. Uh, so you can, if uh, um, you have a, a dashboard, um, on your server that needs to uh, display certain things, then you can just put it in the environment file, so this dashboard should display only uh, the task for this amount of, of people and just let your JavaScript side of things read that environment uh, variable. So it doesn't have built-in support for that, but it's easily extendable to fit that use case. Yes? In your setup, you've shown uh, Raspberry Pi and therefore a fairly dummy TV set. Have yeah. you played at all with any of the smart TVs? Are, any of, uh, are there any smart TVs on the market who do not require an external device? Or just <coughs> well, um, I'm not a TV specialist, but I think I hate smart TVs. I want my TV <laughs> to be as dumb as they, as they can be because that software on it is going to get older. So I really don't know if, that, if there is a TV with a, with a browser built, built in for that uh, that you'll have to investigate on your own. But why would you need a smart TV? You don't need a smart TV. That's, that's just me. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, well, I guess we are done then. So thank you for uh, coming to my talk. You can review the slides. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You can review the slides on Speaker Deck, uh, take a look at our, the open source work that my company has done. Also take a look at my blog, mercy.be, and if you're a newsletter type of kind of a guy or girl, uh, just subscribe to that. Thank you.